Greetings everyone. So today's video we're going to be talking about setting up Onyx which is an Obsidian Control Systems product otherwise known as an Elation lighting product. Today's video is going to be a little different. We're going to be setting this up for church volunteers. Let's just say you had an integrator come in, they plop this in your lap, no programming, no nothing, or you heard your lighting director buddy talk about how great Onyx is and you're just ready to jump on the bandwagon and you bought it, you got it set up, you maybe got your Artnet no talking or you bought an NXDMX, it's going to talk automatically, or you bought a wing, but you're unsure of how to set it up for your church volunteers to grab it and get going with it. So today I'm going to show you how I set up Onyx for church volunteers to grab it and easily get on the road with it. So we're going to start a new show. And so I'm going to ask you, would you like to create a new show? I'm going to say yes. And let's just say your church's name is Church on the Hill. Okay, so I've got the show created. Now, the first thing I always do, Onyx is going to build you a show. And it can look confusing right when Onyx comes up. So right now it's trying to build the, the show data. Um, it's going to build a uh, auto save for your show. So as you go along, Onyx does auto save. It's amazing. Um, it's probably one of the greatest things that any lighting program does is the autosave. So you get presented with this screen and you're like, okay, now what do I do? So because I don't have a visual editor set up, it's going to be kind of hard for you to kind of see the results of what I'm doing. But believe me, it will work. Go in on like a Monday. If you're a church volunteer, go in on a Monday night, start up your Onyx rig. You get presented with this screen. Let me show you what to do. Before you do anything, it is imperative that we patch your fixtures. So I'm gonna I'm going to first maximize this and we're gonna go to patch. So the fictional light rig I've got going on here, we're gonna do the commands here, and I'm gonna say new fixture. You're gonna be presented with this, and again, you might be like, what do I do? I love to search. And I'm going to search for, let's do the front lighting first as always. And in this case, let's say for front lighting, we've got Elation 6 par 300s. Okay. So we've got two options here, 6 par 300 and 6 par 300 IP. Select the one you have. Now, if you're new to DMX, please understand channel modes. This video is going to mostly say that you have a basic understanding of DMX. So you understand channel modes, addressing, universes, all that jazz. So in this case, let's say these lights are in a seven channel mode, which means you get red, green, blue, white, amber, UV, and intensity. So as you can see, I've got my fixture and my mode selected. And I'm gonna hit auto patch. It's gonna bring you to this window. You can give the fixture a name. Let's say these are front lights. And let's say we have uh, 12 of these. So I'll click on the bar and I'll type in 12. You will say I want the start ID to be ID number one. Universe will be one, address will be one, and the footprint here cannot be changed in its seven channels. So as you can see here, universe one is unused and we're going to patch up 12 fixtures. And in just a second, I've got front light 1 through 12. Now then, let's say I've got six more of these as key lighting on a 45 degree truss. So I'm going to go new fixture. But again, now this is where things get really cool. I'm going to go to the history. And let's say we've got the same six part 307 channels. I'm going to select them. As you see, it automatically selected the mode. And I'm going to say auto patch. And let's say I have six of these. And we're going to let it auto fill because it's actually going to be correct. And we're going to call these key lights. And I'll auto patch key lights one through six. And as you can see, we're getting, beginning to populate up some DMX channels, but it's all good. Let's say your church has some up lighting on the same universe. 
So we'll go command, new fixture, and let's say that those up lights are American DJ. In this case, what I'll actually be here is a DJ. And let's say they are 5P X hex. So as you can see, I got 5px and 5px pearl. They respond to the exact same profile. And again, let's just say these are in a seven channel mode. Red, green, blue, white, amber, UV, and intensity. And let's say that we have, let's say that we have eight of these. So two along the left wall, two along the right wall, four across the back. So eight of these, they're on the same. They're gonna follow the patching. So we'll go and cut, but I'm not gonna name them. In this case, I'm going to rename these, so I'll click here, and let's just call these up, light, stage, right. Let's call these up, light, up, stage, and let's call these up, light, stage, left. Okay, so there we go. We got our up lights in. Let's say that we have four flown LED movers on this universe. And they're going to be a wash style mover. So we'll go search. And they are of a type of Chave Rogue. And they are the R2X Wash. And as you can see, they're here. As you can see, there's a lot of channel modes for these. So this is where... DMXing really gets finicky because you just select the first mode. As you can see, it's 56 channels. And if you look at it, it's because it gives it gives a channel to pixel map the individual pixels of the mover. We don't need that, so we'll actually go for 17 channel. And it just does the whole head. And that's what you have them set up as. So I'll patch them. You have four of these, and these will be up stage moving wash they're on universe one but let's say that they begin at address 200 and the footprint of course is 17 now this is where things get interesting as you can see now i can adjust the footprint so i can actually space these fixtures out I can't go any lower than 17 because as you saw it wrapped around to 512 which would not work out so we've got universe one address 200 we have four of these and let's say I want the let's say I want the IDs to start at ID 100 on these or right, let's do 101 now I hit backspace one time and then I go 101 and then I hit enter and we'll apply to the patch. Now, if you get this, these, this says you have unassigned channels. Now in this case, it's the zone selection. Um, on the R2X, you can actually add in some zone selection features. Uh, chances are you're not gonna be using it. So if you don't, if you see something here, you're like, oh, I'm not gonna use this. Look in the manual and see what this channel is. Look for the zone selection. If you see it and you're like, oh, I don't need this, select it. Now, what you have to do is you have to pick where it goes. So you can put it in intensity, pan tilt, color, gobo, beam, beam effects, framing, or unused channels. Basically what this is is when the manufacturer or somebody at Obsidian built the profile, they forgot to assign a channel. In this case, it's a channel that you'll probably never use. But if you need it because you're doing some like cool like rock and roll stuff and you need this channel, patch it somewhere like beam effects but in this case simple church you're not going to be using this so i assigned it and now we're set we got the four wash movers patched now let's say on your upstage truss you have four spot movers so your furthest downstage truss you have four spot movers and they're going to follow the same convention let's say these are shave Rogue R2X spot. 
We'll select it. And as you see, you got an 18 and a 21 channel mode. So we'll apply these to our patch. And I want these to start address 201 or ID 201. Oh, see, and this is where you have to pay attention. You can see I have the amount. We have four of those. I want the ID to be 201. We're going to go with universe one again, but let's say these are at address 300. There's a little bit of a gap here and the footprint again, 21 channels. Don't change that. And we'll call these, these are the down stage moving spots. And I'll apply it to the patch. Now, as you can see, we have a conflict. So when you get this, I'm going to unpatch the picture and let's see which one died away. Okay, apparently we just had an error because nothing got unpatched. Okay. So finally, let's say that your church has some house lights on universe two. Now if you're using free mode, you don't get universe two starting in version 4.6. And we are on 4.8.1239.0. It's a stable release. It's not a beta release. So we're going to patch up some fixtures. And for our house lights, we're going to patch up some Chroma Q Inspire. Very beautiful light. We got them in black. And there's several modes you can go for. Uh, we're going to put them in that. Now, let's say they're in RGBW mode, just four channels. As you can see, we don't have a dimmer. I've got an option down here called Virtual Dimmer Off. I'm going to turn that on. And what this does is this actually applies a virtual intensity channel. And this does not eat up any of your DMX channels, but it gives you an intensity channel over the light. I highly suggest turning this on. We're going to apply to the patch. And we're going to call this the house lights we have 12 of these let's just say they're on universe one starting at address 400 and we have i want to make these ids 301 and then we'll apply to the patch and again we're watching for any issues so as you saw they they hit our patch we have our house lights. And finally, you got a haze machine. Let's just go ahead and throw in one of my all time favorite haze machines, the Antari F1 1. We have one of those. It's in two channel mode. You got control of the fan and the haze. We'll apply to the patch. You have two of these. And they live at address 450. And we will apply to the patch. Okay, let's check this out. There's an error in this profile. Where we don't have phase control. You need the phase control. So I'm actually going to pop this into the phase. Now, as you saw, I forgot to name these. So I'm going to go ahead and select them. And we'll call this the hazers. Okay, so now then, as you see, we've got all of our lighting going. We're good to go. We've got our front lighting, key lighting. We've got our up lights. We've got our moving washes, moving spots, and all of our house lights and the two phasers. So now then, let's go back. Now I said we put those in Universe 2. I changed my mind. We're gonna actually do those on Universe 1. Um, if you already have an existing lighting console, look at your patch before you begin to patch Onyx. That's the quickest way. All your lights are working on a different console. The patch will translate. So now then, you might be looking here, and again, we're like this blank screen, you know, don't know what to do. I always begin by changing these setup looks. So you see, there's a lot of things that we're not going to be using, like Delos. 
Uh, we do use the playback buttons, and we'll get into that a little later. So I'm going to look around. So let's actually click on this little thing here. We'll unlock the workspace. So let's begin to change things up, shall we? So I'm actually going to click on an empty view. We're going to go here, and I always do this on all these. I'm going, clicking on the tile, none, none. Because I want to build my own look. And we're not going to get into 2D plan and all that stuff. We'll get into that another day. We're not going to get into Dylos. We'll get into that another day. But for today, we're just setting up the basics to make your lights turn on and your volunteers be really happy. The top one here, I always make this my fixture center. I'm going to go down one and this is a view that I like to create so I'm gonna add an empty screen and I always like to divide by half and divide by half there up here I'll put in the groups of light up here I always like to look at my programmer to see what's in the programmer and down here I like to do my presets so we'll save this look and we'll call this pro programming look so you might come in here to program a service or a, or a special event or a show or maybe you need to make a quick tweak if you're operating lights that Sunday I'll go down one more this is a view that I think is in the views uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. effects program I like this because this actually oops, get out of that because in here if you have your picture groups your fixture selection and some macros some kind of pre-made macros these can get you out of a bind pretty quickly okay so as you can see I have no fixture groups there are some pre-made groups but I like to make my own groups so let's start with let's make a group of front lights so I selected all 12 of the front lights I'm going to bring up my virtual keyboard because I don't have a physical console. And now that I got those selected, I'm going to go over to groups. I'm going to hit record and I'm going to record that to group one. And we're going to call this front lighting. And the reason I did that is look here. Front lighting now shows up as a group. We'll do another selection. And in this case, we'll call this the... Key lighting go back here and let's actually select all of our up lights and let's make a group called up lights go back to pictures let's select our moving washes and we'll call these move moving wash go back and select our moving spots okay and finally we'll select all of our house lights we'll make a group and we'll call these the house lights and finally, can't forget about a group for the phasers. Now, I'm going to go here because I like my phasers group to kind of live somewhere out of the way. So I'll put it on the bottom right here in this view, and I'll name it Hazers. Short and simple, Hazers. Now, this is where we can get into some nice grouping. Okay, let's say I've got three key light stage left. And I want to be able to access those directly. So we'll go here, we'll do key lights. Call those the stage right key lights. And our OK, 
Okay, now then, I'm gonna create some more groups. Let's create some custom groups for our stage right. Stage right up lights. Let's create some for our upstage up lights. And we'll create some for our Sage left up lights. So now that as you can see, I've got a lot of control here. Um, every once in a while, I might actually create a group that only has one fixture. Let's say I want to stay in this view. So I might actually create a view of Let's do a group on the moving washes. Let's do wash one. Wash two. You can kind of get the picture here. I'm going to go ahead and do this, like, to kind of help you see what we can do. Okay, so this is kind of enough control to get you getting started. Uh, some other custom groups that I might do is I might grab my up lights and my moving wash lights. And I might make it, and I'll, sometimes I'll make a group called, and I'll do it down here at the bottom again. All color mixing lights. Now the reason I like to make a group like that is, for instance, we start doing color presets. So let's start doing some color presets. Um, I like to make some just some generic color presets so you can do HSV values by using the color picker so you can make your own presets but let's just make some very generic simple presets uh, the other thing that you'll need to do is if you have lights of different color mixing varieties actually all of our lights have common red, green, blue, and white but our up lights also have amber and UV. So I'll turn that off. Because when I mix colors for things like that, I don't normally want amber and UV in the mixture. So let's get started. Let's just do a simple red. And we'll call this red. Oops. Yep, we're in the right one color. Okay. Let's do green. Let's do blue. So that's your three primary colors. Let's do some mixed colors. So orange, we'll add red and we'll go 35% green. Let's do yellow, which will be We'll just do a common value at 80. And feel free to tweak these amongst your lights. Again, we're doing generic to give you an idea of what you're doing and how you're doing it. Let's do some purple, which will be blue at 70, red at 100 again. Let's do some cyan. I love cyan. And finally, let's do a white. And we're gonna use the common mixing of all of our lights. Okay, now then, let's talk about lights that have color and gobo wheels. In this case, would be our moving spots. I'm gonna to go to the color, 
and as you can see we actually have two color wheels on these so let's do I'm gonna I'm actually gonna add these into the groupings so red now you're gonna get a message that preset preset exists what do you want to do do you want to merge data replace data edit the command you're requesting or cancel I'm gonna say merge so what this is doing is it's keeping the existing data in the preset but we're adding a merge we're merging this color red right here into the red preset so we have a green we'll just keep it in color wheel one we'll record and we'll add it and we'll merge it let's go for some blue which will in this case is called dark blue merge and we need some orange some yellow some magenta which will fall into that purple some light blue which will fall in under cyan and white would be the fixture open okay so let's use some color presets let's move on to let's clear the programmer which we'll do by clicking clear and you'll have to click it twice sometimes i just do that that's a lighting guy thing okay let's go to gobos so on these lights that we picked out we have a lot of capability we have two gobo wheels As you can see, we have gobo and then we have a shake. I'm just going to start out by making the gobo. So this is wheel one, gobo one. Wheel one, gobo two. Oops. I hit the escape key which cancels the command. We one go by four. We will one go by six. And as you can see I'm just gonna kinda seven we're gonna go open I'm gonna say wheel one open let's see how many gobos we have in wheel two looks like we have one two three four five six seven eight gobos in wheel two Another cool tr trick that you can do is double click on that and as you can see it brings up a little window here so you have select shake okay so let's actually just go open we'll go go by one or we'll record so wheel two go bow one go bow stands for go between so it's inserting a stamped piece of steel or glass into the optical pattern again we're assuming you already know that
course we'll add Google to open. Okay, go ahead and clear the program. We're gonna reselect our spot movers, but this time we're gonna take a look at some beam and focus. So you have a focus adjustment. You'll probably have to set this as you program. Um, you actually have an iris aperture in the lights that we have. So you can play with that. We're not going to mess with that. You have a frost that can be inserted. Love frost and a spot mover. And you have a prism and a prism index and rotate. Um, you can decide if you want that and we're actually not going to make presets for that. So let's begin by making some, let's go ahead and add a new view and we'll call this the, we'll go for an existing view, playback, and we're going to add the playback buttons. Remember I said we would play with this later? Well, we're later. I like to make another couple of views. So I'm going to add an empty view here. I'm going to get rid of the virtual thing here. Split this in half. We're going to add over here the playback buttons. And over here, I like to add selected cue list. And I'll show you why when we get down to programming. We will save the view. I like the name of it already. Playback buttons plus selected cue list. Um, let's go through some other things I like to add at the very bottom here always handy to have the digital clock in case you gotta switch down if the time on your computer is correct the time on your digital clock will be correct and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add the 2d plan um, we're not there to talking about the 2d plan yet but we will make a video later on about the 2d plan and also as far as the programming I like to add the live output um, you can actually click over there real quick and, and quickly see what percentages things are on your lights. That's actually really handy as a programming feature if you're programming for a show. Okay, so we'll actually go on ahead and we'll lock the workspace. We got everything we need. Let's begin to program. So, first thing we will need to do, let's do the easiest ones first. Let's talk about phase. I never program phase into the cues that pertain to my service. I make them separate. And I'll actually do that on the bottom right hand here, probably the bottom right four playbacks. I'll click on the hazers and we will bring the fan up to 100 because why wouldn't you? And I'm going to bring in the haze at 20%. And I'm going to make a playback button we'll call this haze at 20 clicking be mindful of values we're gonna put the fan value back in the programmer I'll tell you why that's important in just a minute and I'm gonna do haze at 50 And finally, we're going to do one more. Again, I'm going to put the fan value in the programmer. We're going to kick that haze right on up to 100. If you think of more values or you know the values you need, let's say you already have these hazers or, you, in, or your specific hazers, uh, feel free to add your values that you know that you need in. Okay, so we got the buttons here. So you might need to click on it. Well, as you can see, I got it going, but I can't get it stopped. Well, let's, let me show you how we would program this to be intuitive as a what I would like to what Obsidian calls a toggle. So I'm going to right click, and you're going to get the Q list properties options for Q list one haze at 20. The first thing I like to do is I'm going to say the release at zero, so zero seconds because I want it to release instantly. Function assignment. When you go to function assignment, because it's a button, well, you only have a button. So the down action, which is when you click the button, I want to be a toggle. And I'm going to right click on all these and do the same thing. Oops, not 
flash out. We want to, dang it, I want to toggle. Okay, so now then, you remember that view that I made, the playback buttons plus select a cue list? So when you right click on a cue list, or you can say select, I've selected the cue list. So hey, is it, at, it basically makes a single cue cue list. The trigger is a go. We have no delay, but we have a, a fade time at two and a half seconds. I want to change that. So I'm going to put the cue list, I'm going to put the cue list, the selected cue list view here in edit mode. And I'm going to click on every one of these and go fade, zero, enter. Okay. Well, you can name the cue so I can literally name it, you know, haze at 100. Takes at 100%. Yeah, well, I mean, you can do things like that. You don't have to for single queue queue lists. Um, but that shows you if you wanted to make a multiple queue queue list for, say, service control, but you could do that. Let's say you want to do that route. But in this case, we're just trying to give your volunteers some ample control with the playback buttons here. Okay. So now then, let's create. Um, let's do, I'm going to select everything here and I'm going to say at zero. Now the reason why I'm adding values for everything we're getting ready to touch is because if you don't have values for everything you touch, the next cue list that might have a new value will not apply it. So in this case, I'm actually going to change what we're doing because we're going to do something a little different here. So I'm going to apply values to all the lights except the movers and we'll get into why I'm doing that in just a second so let's go in this let's, let's set the all the intensities at zero I'm gonna go to the house lights we want them at a hundred with a full red green blue white and everything else is at zero. Let's go ahead and put the up lights at 50. And I'm not going to assign a color in this view. So we're going to save this as a playback. We're going to call this playback one pre, pre post service. Clear the programmer. We'll sign it as a toggle. We'll leave the release time at three seconds and we'll actually go over here. We'll leave the fade time at two and a half seconds. That's fine and dandy. Okay. So. And all I did was I did the same thing as what I did over here on the keypad. You could type in, if you have picture select, you can type in at and then a value on the keypad here. So we can say 75. And it's going to take every selected fixture to 75% intensity. Okay. So now then, we're doing, um, let's do a worship look. So worship, we want the house lights down to 50. And I want a blue in my house lights. The up lights will bring on up to 100%. Why is my phone going off? Notice from a vendor on Christmas of all things. And we're going to take the key lighting and the front lighting up to, let's take the front lighting up to 90 and let's take the key lighting down to 70. But I want to apply a custom color in there that we wouldn't normally select in the colors. So let's say that I want to do See, that's kind of a color calibrated. I haven't worked with these lights a lot. The last time I worked with them, I think that was what I used for values. And then we got the house lights at blue, 50%. And I'm not applying anything. And we got the up lights at 100. So let's do this as a
This is a worship look. Okay. Bring the lights down. Everybody's worshiping. Again, we're going to right click and we're going to say toggle. But in this case, I want to change the release time or the fade in time to seven seconds. So when you click on this button from pre post service, now the reason why I talked about values and why we need valuing, I'm going to clear the programmer, is let's say we're in pre post service, assuming I'm in the right mode. Always make sure you're in custom when you get ready to play. So don't leave it anywhere else. Tell your volunteers, click custom. Okay, so we're in pre-post now we're gonna go to service. As you saw, the transition jumped right from pre-post into serve into worship. Okay? That's important. Make sure anything that you apply values to has a value. Because if you have something that doesn't have a value, it's gonna hold the value here. Looky there. Check that out. Why did that hold? Well, I'll tell you why. If I look at the values of this queue list, we'll edit the queue, and I go look at the programmer, you will see that my front lights are at zero, but they have no color data. So they're holding the color data. Now, that's not important because the front lights come down. So why does it matter? Well, it matters because the color data is being looked at from another queue. This is a highest takes precedence. The other queue has color data. This queue does not. So that's a great example. So let's click on our front lighting and our key lighting, which all have no color data. And we will add some color data. Oh, that's some good color data or we can do there there's some good color data we'll update the queue so if you want to edit a playback button right click it or select it using the select feature hit the edit button as you see it's got a blue light and I'm going to say Q active and inactive and I'm going to hit return on my keyboard this brings the queue back into the programmer so, little neat trick. You set, you make your changes and click update. In this case, I already made the changes. You saw me do it. I clicked clear. So now when I click on pre post service, then to service, then back to pre post service, back to service. Okay. So let's say that everything in this queue list I want to use to make another queue list. There's two ways that I can bring the queue back into the programmer, but in this case, I'm going to use the load function here. So I'm going to click load and that's going, okay, what do you want to load? I want to load the base values. We are going to merge whatever's in the programmer with whatever I'm loading. We are going to look at active and inactive. And I'm not worried about. I can capture DMX out, which would, if you have things going in the programmer and out of the programmer, DMX out is actually a very good thing to use sometimes. I'm not going to use it today. Okay, so I've got this going. I'm going to hit load again. And as you saw, my clear button just lit up. If I go over here to my programmer, you see everything happening on the console just got brought it back into the program. So in this case, we're going to make a sermon look so I'm going to I'm gonna select my front lighting pastor don't like it as bright we're gonna take a little bit of the edge off we'll take the front lights down to 60 we're gonna bring the key lighting down to 40 and then we're going to take the up lights we don't want them as distracting so we'll bring them down to 80 now then I want to record that as a cue. I want to record, click on a new tile here, and we're going to call this sermon. Wait, you might have just done something I did wrong. I didn't change the house lights. So, okay, we've created the look here. We'll switch to sermon. We'll change it to toggle. We'll go here. We'll add a five second fade. Pastor's like, me, I don't want blue at 50%. Change it. Okay, so how do you change it? 
right click, edit, Q, active plus inactive, enter. Okay, so now then, we're back here. As you can see, the queue's been brought back into the programmer. And you see up here and down here on my keypad, there's a flashing update. So we're gonna go on the house lights. Pastor wants the house lights back to white. And he wants the intensity brought up because 50% ain't enough for you to read your Bible. But you don't want it blaring bright 100%. Let's, let's go with 75%. Okay, so I did that there. Now then, this flashing update, what does it mean? Well, I'm gonna click it. You just notice everything is shot out of my programmer and the clear button is no longer eliminated. What just happened? Well, I just changed the values of the queue and updated it. That's very important. So, okay, let's make another one. Let's create an, let's create a queue called invitation. Okay, so I like my sermon queue. We're gonna load it. We're gonna do a load like we did last time, bringing it back into the programmer. The band is gonna come back up, so we need a little more light on them, but I don't want a whole lot. The front lights are currently at 60. We'll keep them there. We'll keep the we'll keep the key light. We'll go ahead and bring the key lighting up a little bit. Let's say to 50. Our up lights, I want to bring them down. Let's go to 60 on those. And on our house lights. Well, we want a, a nice feel for an invitation. I'm going to bring them down to 30. And we're going to go back to a blue on the house lights. Now, you notice I don't have a flashing update. I didn't edit Q. I loaded. So we can record. Click on a tile here and we'll call this. Invitation. Save it. Through the programmer. And we will change the action to toggle. And we'll go here. We want a long fade into the invitational. We'll make it 15 seconds. So now when I click on invitation, I'll let you see it run over here in the selected cue list. As you see, it's a very slow 15 second fade. So in that time, the house lights are coming way down. The uh, front lighting's coming back up, the up lights are coming down, all the distractions are being removed, but you can still see the band, you can still see the pastor as he's giving his invitational speech. Okay, so let's make, let's do one more, and I'm going to base it off of the worship cue. Let's say your church has a time of dismissal where somebody comes up and speaks, but you want the house lights back up. So, I'm going to go back in, we're going to use the load command again. Bring it into the programmer. And we're going to leave the front lights up, but the one thing we are going to change is we're going to bring the house lights all the way up to 100. And I'm going to save this key as dismissal, dismissal announcements. We'll click. So they're all working. We'll go back up to pre-service. Now then, let's make some color cues on our up lights. So we'll go into worship. At this point, I'm gonna click on the up lights. We're gonna go over to color. Make sure everything looks good there. And let's make a selection of colors on the up lights. So we'll do Red. Lights green. And I'll go ahead and make the rest of these. You're snoring in the background. My wife is asleep in the same room as I'm making this video. She's a very heavy sleeper, so don't worry.
So I made all those. Here on out the programmer, and I'm gonna go to every one of these. I'm actually gonna go into select mode. Yeah, I missed that one. Let's just make sure. Well, those are working, so I'm going to put those in blue. Blue is my favorite color for lighting. Okay, so we'll get out of that. And now then, we've got it's kind of some basic cues here that you can use. Let's say, okay, later on, we need to add a video cue. And the video cue will be just simply that, a video cue. And let's say I want to load it off of our worship look. So I'm actually going to take out the color, we're going to edit, see, we're going to load, in this case we're going to go hit all of the lights, all the up lights, or the front lighting and key lighting, we're turn them to zero, up lights, we're going to bring those down to 20%, and the house lights, we're going to bring those down to 10%, and we'll call this our video cue I'm gonna leave the timing kind of the same actually you know what? let's do this video let's make it four seconds so the, it, so the impact of that is not so I'll leave all these at a three second or a two and a half second fade with a pre with a three second release it'll look good uh, if you want to change them you know how to change them I already showed you how to change them okay this is something I get asked all the time. I want my movers to move and change in black. How do I do it? Okay, so we're gonna write, let's start with the wash movers. So I'll click on them. We're gonna add, we're not gonna add any pan and tilt. I'm just gonna add a intensity cue. We'll call this, we'll go over, we'll leave an empty space. Well, let's do right here. We'll start a, let's go here. And we'll do wash movers up. Okay. And we'll toggle it. And I like a three second up down on the movers. So we'll leave it there. You know how to change it. So now then let's bring up the wash movers here. And let's begin to make some presets. So first things first, let's just add a little tilt out on them. And I'm not going to add any color, so let's do make an intensity or not intensity. This time it's a pre a positional preset. And now let's talk a little bit about why I would do this. Let's say I want to do a little fan out on the. Let's just call that a little bit of a, let's go, 60 and 40, and we'll keep the tilt values the same way. Let's do, okay, there's some good looks. You can add other presets. Um, because we don't have the lights in front of us and we don't have a, a viz. Um, in this case, we're just not worried about it. So what else is a wash? What else does these wash movers have? Well, let's, you know. Okay, so let's clear the program. Let's go select all the wash movers and let's take a look at some of the features of these wash movers and things that we might want to use. I'm going to go to the beam. And as you see, it's got a central, it's got a zoom on it. Let's say I kind of want... A narrow zoom so we'll call this narrow zoom wide zoom and 
central zoom. Okay. So we got some zoom here. We'll add some toggle to it. We'll leave the fade times the same. Now, you might be looking at this push to all button. I've yet to kind of figure out how that works. So, okay. So now I've got some position and some zoom going on. I did a lot with the movers up. So. Now then, because again we have wash movers, let's add some color into those movers. Let's go color. And let's do And again, I'm just I'm just going to cruise along with this. Ah, you see I just made a mistake. So how would I change that? Okay. So I'm going to go back to this like a key list. I'm going to click here. And now I've changed it. Let's go back here. So now then, I've got some effects on my wash movers. I got several things going here. So several buttons, several controls. Give your. So let's talk about. I gotta make some quick changes here again. Gotta go through. Now then, we got some spot movers on our on our profile on our list. I'm gonna leave an empty row here for effects. Um, we'll get into that another day. Again, we're just trying to get your lights up and going, just making sure that our we're still recording with no issues. Okay, so now then, let's let's go back in. Let's start adding some new effects to our spot movers. So again, I'm just gonna do another. Playlist. I'm gonna do a row here and we'll call this spot movers up and I'll set it to toggle okay we'll clear out and I'll bring up the spot movers and now then let's go to the spot movers and I'll just do a couple of quick positions on those we'll do the same thing That'll be a spot tilt out. Let's do it. Let's do a quick fan. them out now then because on your spot movers you actually have 
more values. This is something that I recommend doing is make it simple for your volunteers. If you want a gobo with a color, add it in. So let's do, select all our spots. We'll go to color. Let's say I want red and I want Let's say I want the weird circle gobo. Okay. So we'll do. Okay. Let's set them to green. And let's say on that one, I want that gobo. And I want the prism out on the green. And let's say blue, I want everybody to take it seriously. So we'll take out that, take out the gobos, and we'll set the color to blue. I got some good values set up here. Um, of course, we just need to change it all to. Okay. So. Now you kind of have an idea of how to set things up. So I've got several, we've got several looks here that can be applied at any moment. And your volunteers just click along. That's, you just write down an order of service. They know to bring up the haze at 20. When service starts, it's just blowing out haze. Uh, hey, got people fanning the door, so you're losing your haze. You can give it a quick burst at 50 or go all out. So, that's just a quick how to build a Onyx show to get you started. This is this is not the end all Onyx show. You will add a lot more things into this show, and maybe you won't add as much. Maybe you just want your volunteers to have simple control. Maybe you want to play back for every song. And this is like the look for that song. So you come in as the lighting director, you build it, and then you hand it over to the volunteers. This just kind of gives the volunteers a little bit of control. If you like, hey, lighting volunteer, here's you some looks. Make it happen. You can come in and edit these looks at any time. I've showed you how. Again, just right click, edit cue, and then you can change, you know, the go button. Okay? So that's been a quick Onyx um, for beginners programming. And to just shut down everything from the night. I always go through and I just double click on everything just to make sure that nothing is set to go. Okay, so check it out. I made a mistake. So let me show you what I've done wrong. Um... 
and you will get wrong and you will have issues. Now see, I can click on fade here. I'm gonna hit the escape key. Escape is a universal command clear. Edit Q, enter, bring it in, and let's see what I did wrong. Look here, I click on the washes. Look here, I got two that do not have pan and tilt. So now then, problem solved. Okay. They come out, service is over, they click all the buttons off, and you're done. Shut down the console. Finally, we need to save the show. This is another confusing point in Onyx. If you're not using Dylos, save with content does not apply to you. It only applies if you're using Dylos. We might do a Dallas tutorial later in the later on, but right now I just want to save without content, and we'll name this show Church on the Hill Initial Light Show File, and let's add a date. Today is the 25th of 2022. So if anything happens, back that show up on a USB stick, install Onyx on your next computer, plug in all your hardware, and you're good to go. So this has been a quick tutorial on how to set up Onyx with this screen here for your volunteers to come in at any moment and grab the shows. Thanks for watching.